So, you just hit level 70 and you're asking what to do now. What do you mean? Now we can finally play the game. People ask about this quite often, so I thought it was video worthy. And the first thing I'll say is that the Burning Crusade is still pretty basic as far as endgame is concerned. It's not like current World of Warcraft where you have a bunch of systems to unlock. Overall, it's much more tame, and your endgame activity will lie in the more straightforward things that you'd come to expect from an MMO. I'll start with my subjective order of importance, and that's with flying. There are two speeds of flying trainable at level 70. That's 60% and 280%. 60% makes you feel like you're in a line at the country kitchen buffet. Like, seriously. Bar some unfriendly terrain areas, it's actually faster to use a 100% ground mount. Getting that 280% speed mount, in my opinion, is the single most important goal for you when reaching level 70 because it just allows you to do everything else faster. You can farm faster, leveling your gathering skills faster, get to your dungeons and raids faster, you're less gankable in PvP, and at the very minimum, the 60% training is required to reach some dungeons, which are required for attuning to the raids in the expansion. The only problem is the cost. For 60%, in total, it's 900, less depending on your reputation discounts, and for 280%, it's 5200. Obtaining this gold is really up to you. There are a lot of ways to earn it in VC. If you're watching this video at launch, professions are going to be extremely good, either selling powerful crafted pieces or the materials to make them, including the base stuff like ore, herbs, and skins. There are some mob spots that you can farm as well. The Elemental Plateau is a pretty popular one, but you do need 60% flying or a summon to get up there, and it's located right here in Northern Nagrand, and you'll find elementals wandering about, and they have a good chance to drop elemental motes, which you combine into primals, which are used to many high-level crafted items in the game. We're starting to get into gold guide territory here though, so I'll leave it at that. The number one most important thing, in my opinion at least, 280 flying. Next is kind of minor, but I wanted to mention it now since I just talked about flying, but get yourself a riding crop. This is a craftable trinket by leather workers that increases your mount speed by 10%, and it's bind unequipped so you don't need to be a leather worker to use it, so you can just buy it off the auction house or find someone to make it for you, as it does make a big difference, especially if you have mining, herbalism, or you're using the engineer's mode extractor to farm. And number two on our list, since I've mentioned it already, is to get your professions leveled. Professions are so important in the Burning Crusade, and I can't stress it enough. If you thought that they were important in vanilla, you haven't seen anything yet. Burning Crusade professions have the best gear in the game through multiple phases. You have the popular three-tier blacksmith weapons, although these won't be phase one. You have Storm Herald, Lionheart Executioner, Dragon Strike, and so on. The three tailoring specializations you might know about by now. That's the Primal Mooncloth set for healers, Spellcloth for mostly mages, and Shadowcloth for shadow priests and warlocks, especially early on. Leatherworking has the drums, which are the many heroisms you've probably heard about, and Engineer has a new selection of gadgets and explosives, Alchemy new consumes, Gathering professions will be incredibly lucrative like I said, more so early on when everyone is leveling up their professions, or Skin and Herbs always sell at a premium, and so much more. And don't forget about your secondaries as well, as they did get some love in BC. If you happen to still be undecided in your professions, I do have a full profession picking guide that goes over each one in detail, with suggestions to point you in the right direction. I'll have that linked in the description if you happen to need it. But all in all, professions are so crucial in character progression and gold making in the Burning Crusade, and I want to have them at number 2 here, even ahead of attunements, which will be number 3 on our list. You know all about this if you saw my recent attunement guide. The raiding in the Burning Crusade expansion is unique in the fact that many of the raids are locked behind lengthy attunement quests that can be summed up with this flowchart. To attune to the Black Temple, you need to attune to Mount Hyjal, and to attune to that, you need to attune to the Eye and Serpent Shrine. To attune to the Tempest Keep, you needed heroic dungeons, and those require revered reputation with the five main factions in BC. And as a bonus, these factions also have good gear and profession recipes for fresh 70s that a lot of people forget about. But it's a huge and massive process, so much so that, like I said, I did cover it already. And not to send you to a million videos here, 
but if you do need help starting it, I did make that guide and I'll have that in the description as well. But obviously, being able to zone into all of these raids is pretty important, I think we can all agree. And this should be one of your main activities as soon as you hit level 70. And next, kind of tied to heroics here, at number 4, it's also a good idea to start your badge farm from these heroics, and in the later phase Karazhan, you'll get these badges of justice, and you spend these at one of the wind chimes in Shatrath for some really nice early level epics. This is one of the best ways to fill out your character and target actual gear slots, and don't forget about the daily heroic. Also in Shatrath, right outside the bar, will be an ethereal who offers you a quest to bring back an item from a random heroic boss for two more badges daily, so this will be one of the key methods in progressing your character shortly after hitting level 70. And I also wanted to talk about PvP, and before you skip ahead, this does also relate to those only interested in PvE. The PvP system got big changes in the Burning Crusade, Honor is now an actual currency that you earn and spend at vendors, and all of this gear no longer requires any sort of rating to obtain. As soon as you get the points and marks, that's it. There's also a new Eye of the Storm battleground that you unlock at level 70 that may or may not interest you. And as for the new competitive endgame PvP activity, this is of course Arena. Weekly, as long as you play 10 matches, you'll get a certain amount of another currency called Arena Points, and the higher rating you are, or the bigger bracket that you fight in, the more you get, and you spend these points on higher level gear. So for PvPers, this is all pretty straightforward, as it's their main endgame activity. I said that this does relate to PvEers as well though, although this gear isn't optimal since it does have resilience, which is a PvP stat, it can still be used to fill out certain slots that maybe you've had bad luck with in dungeons or raids. The weapons in particular are the big thing that a lot of PvEers get. They do have shifting rating requirements that they've already changed their minds on a couple times here. And the game hasn't even launched yet, so I don't want to get too crazy with this right now. But as of this video, they have it as all but the weapons and shoulders you can get without rating. Just arena points. 2000 for the shoulders, and 1850 for the weapons. But everything else you can buy as soon as you have the points for them. Whether that be honor points or arena points. And as they move into the future seasons, the rating requirements for the previous seasons will be removed. They said that they're gonna play it by ear basically and go from there, so I'm not even gonna try to get into what pieces will require what rating. You'll just have to look at that yourself on whatever they decide to do. So again, although this gear does have resilience, which is wasted stats for PvE, this will become more and more powerful the later it is into the expansion, since you can just straight up buy a full set of purples fresh at 70 from farming PvP no matter how bad you are at it. And the next thing I wanted to mention are the non-attunement reputations. There are a few more optional reputations in the Burning Crusade that you might be interested in. The Netherwing is probably the most popular. These guys are located in the Shadowmoon Valley, and following a quest chain, daily quests, and egg hunting, you can purchase your very own Nether Drake to separate yourself from all of the peasants using griffins and wyverns. You start the quest chain for them from Mordenai, who's an NPC wandering the Netherwing fields in the Shadowmoon Valley zone. The Aldor and Scryer are very important factions in BC, and most people will pick one during their leveling actually, and by doing so, you unlock different quests, hubs, and of course items and enchants and whatnot, and by selecting one, you essentially lock out the other, as raising reputation with one decreases the other one. You can switch later on, but it will cost you a lot of time and gold. So the first question is usually, which one is the best? Well, it depends on your class and spec, professions, and what you think is important. I'll have a link to a wowhead guide that goes over all of that, the rewards, patterns, and chants, and so on, so you can make an informed decision. So check for that link in the description. We also have the Shatari Skyguard and Terracar Forest. If you grind reputation with them to Exalted, you can get the rideable Nether Rays. And you start the chain for this faction from Eula, who can be found next to the Flightmaster and Shatrath, so it really depends. Are you a Nether Drake kind of person, or a Nether Ray? Or maybe both. You also have the Ogrela faction in Blade's Edge. These are the Apexis Crystal Addicts, and I hope you guys have practiced your Simon Says skills. I remember that this one caused quite a bit of rage among players, even spawning an add-on if I recall correctly. But these guys have their own quest chain, daily quest to grind rep for, no mounts with them, 
just various gear as rewards, which vary in usefulness depending on your class and your spec, but just wanted to make sure you knew about them at the very least. These factions probably won't be available from Phase 1. We haven't gotten any official details yet, but they were all released in Patch 2.1, which was the Black Temple patch, which would line them up for Phase 3 and the re-release. And the only exception for that is the Nether Wing, which you originally could start the chain at launch, but it wasn't until 2.1 is when you could actually get the Drake, so it remains to be seen on how they'll handle this in the re-release. And lastly, we have the Shattered Sun Offensive. In Phase 5, with the release of the Sunwall Raid, a new daily hub will open up for this faction, and this is probably the most intense of the daily activities in BC. If you do their quests, you'll get reputation and caches that have high-level profession recipes, and you can also buy gear and more recipes from their quartermaster. So gear-wise, this has the most effect on your character out of all of the factions in the game, not counting attunement and access to raids, of course, and it'll definitely be an important part of gearing up upon hitting level 70. But that's about it. Like I said, pretty short video, but that's because it's really straightforward. There's definitely more than in vanilla, and it will be time consuming, don't get me wrong. But still, your itinerary remains to be pretty direct as far as MMOs go. Nonetheless, I hope this video helped point you in the right direction, and give you a good gist of what you want to do. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Farewell for now, mortals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. See you again soon.